Okay, very quick update on bonds here. TLT again. It's February. It's a uh, May nineteenth, uh, not 10, 10 p.m. So markets close Thursday night. Last candle of the week tomorrow, and we'll go to the week to the daily chart. So remember, we suspected this was a swing low on, in the last video, and you'll see it's posted in the description. So we do still have a high. So what is that? It's a high at one eighteen eighty nine. Right. Yeah. So 118.89, that was our high on day three. Right. So this was day one, two, three. Then we had this little back test, which this thing tends to kind of do coming out of daily cycle lows. Right. And so like this was a good example of a back test. Wait, where is a good example like this one? That was a really scary one, like and then it kept going. Right. Like, look at that. And then it kept going. And so. This went like, whoop, looked like it was going to make a low, and then we got a swing low. This is important to understand how this price action works, right? See, that's a swing low, and that is a higher low, because that low is higher than that low. This is bullish, right? That's a high, that's a higher low. That is not a higher high yet. This is actually a double top, because this is a slightly lower high than this one. So tomorrow is going to be really interesting, and that's kind of the way TLT moves, right? Especially in this very bearish kind of trend, you're going to get just a lot of red candles, and we may not be totally out of the woods, but today, Thursday, was day eight, so tomorrow, Friday, will be day nine. You know, maybe we put it in the daily cycle high there, and we kind of roll over, but more importantly, if we look at the weekly chart to understand if we got an ICL, if we had an ICL, an intermediate cycle low, also called a weekly cycle low, this is still just an inside week, right? So we have not made a new high. That would be above 119.20. Still just an inside week. And so it's still, we need to get that swing low before we can know for sure or have a high degree of confidence that this is an ICL. We also theoretically need to get back above this 10 period moving average which right now is at 123 in, in the 123 neighborhood, but it is falling. You can see it's clearly dropping. And so that makes me think we are going to continue to move higher. Maybe we stall out to next week. This remains an inside week, and then we get an inside week break. So that'd be a break above 118.72. You know, I could see it, you know, taking you like up here, like the 124 area. That would get you nicely above the 10, 10 week moving average. Because the possibility is this is going to be a bearish weekly cycle. Like, look at this weekly cycle. We made a low. So, okay, let's start with this weekly cycle, right? So we we had our high on week 18, and then we had a bit of a you know double top kind of situation where it looked like we were going to make a new high, but we just did not. And then we rolled over to week a week 30 low. And then we rallied out of that low to week to week seven. And then we just collapsed. And that's what we just experienced. We had this little rally here that almost closed above the 10 period moving average, then got massively rejected the next week. And then more downside, another lower high, big downside. So this is this may end up being another lower high, right? Maybe we get back to the 10 period moving average. And that's sort of all she wrote, right? Like, you know, you can imagine, you know, something like that. And then it's like, oh, are we going to go? No, we're going to go lower. You know, you can kind of see something like that. And again, the monthly important to note, this is month 14 of a yearly cycle, right? That topped out on month nine. So that's another important clue, actually, as you think about it. Look at this cycle, right? This monthly cycle, or excuse me, excuse me, this yearly cycle. So this previous yearly cycle was very left translated because the high was on week 13 and that was the high that came in, on, in the COVID crash. And then we rolled over and we made our low on month 15, which was March, 2021. And then we've since, so that, so this whole thing is a yearly cycle that's 15 months long, right? And since then we rallied out of that yearly cycle low March, 2021, and we made a high on in December, 2021. And we've been descending ever since. So right before the S&P topped, but right after the NASDAQ topped. And so we've had this really steep drop, right? And so as I keep saying, this is a massive lower low, right? Like you can think of this as a bear flag, 
this is a massive lower low. We've got to get a bounce at some point, you imagine, to like, you know, come up here and then we get the coup de grace. We, we go much lower. The question is, what level does that bounce come? Like, who knows? It does look like we're setting up a weekly cycle low. And so that makes me think this bounce is happening. It's in motion right now. And so we'll see how. And, and so in terms of the, the daily chart, the way you want to play it tomorrow, you know, we theoretically need to get above 118.72. But if you if you zoomed into like the hourly chart, you can kind of get a better sense. You see, we had this swing high on the hourly again, like these all these concepts work on all the time frames. I'd say you really just need a break above. I mean, and this is this is the part that's art and science, a little bit subjective. But if you get a break above like the sort of 117.62 area, you could easily see a move up to like 118, 119 is my is my sense. Again, the way this thing trades is a little bit erratic, but it is incredibly liquid and it is highly, highly correlated to the 10 year yield. So I think it does have a lot more downside, but you know, we may be in a bounce period right now and it's gonna be important to watch how this plays out because of the correlation with markets in general.